Now, no major election or referendum is complete these days without a battle bus. And today, the Vote Leave campaign are unveiling theirs. Key figures will be on board as it makes its way across the UK ahead of the vote on Britain's EU membership next month. One of those is, of course, Boris Johnson. He'll be on the bus's first journey and joins us now at the starting point of Truro in Cornwall. Good morning Good to morning. you, Boris. Good morning. Uh, you How know, are you? Yes, uh, good morning. Yes, with the, I don't know, we haven't got the battle bus here, but it's coming. OK, right. We, we await its arrival, as I'm sure you do. Now, there is a rival bus to yours. Alan Johnson is behind the Labour In for Britain one. And I'm sure you've seen Alan Johnson is, is calling campaigners like yourself extremists and not rational. And they say that yeah. you've got nothing nice to say about the EU. What do you like about the EU, Boris? Well, I, think, I, I, I do think it very odd that we're being called extremists and irrational and all this kind of thing, when only the other day we were being told that World War Three was going to break out if we voted to leave. And really, that cannot be uh, sensible. Everybody knows that the peace in this uh, continent is really guaranteed by NATO. And if, if it really is true that World War Three and bubonic plague are about to, to break out, then why on earth are we having this referendum? This is a referendum about taking back control of £350 million a week, which uh, we could spend according to our priorities here in this country. It's about taking back control of our borders. And I think it's about getting back control of British democracy. And I'm, I believe in this country. I love Europe. Of course, I, I have many, many wonderful, happy memories of living, working, uh, going on holiday uh, to Europe. Most of my family come from one European country or another. Um, of course we love Europe, but there's a difference between Europe and the institutions of the European Union. And they are now evolving, I think, in a direction that is simply not compatible with long-term health of, of UK democracy. That's my view. You mentioned your family, Mr Johnson. Um, we had your brother, the university's minister, Joe, on the programme yesterday, talking about how leaving Europe would really damage science in the UK, talking about partnerships, about the flow of talent, about funding as well. We know that your dad is voting in, your other brother and your sister as well. If you're struggling to convince those who love you, how do you convince have, the British I have public? A, I have a... I have, I, there, are, there are no shortage of, uh, of Johnsons, and I can tell you, uh, we, there, I, have, I, have yet other, I have yet another brother who is f firmly pro-Brexit, and he's right. And just going to the points about science funding and, uh, and the rest, let's, let's be clear. Of the money that we send to Brussels, £20 billion a year, £10 billion we never see again. It goes on all sorts of things. Greek tobacco farming, Spanish bullfighting. £110 million a year of CAP money goes on Spanish bullfighting, for heaven's sake. Uh, now, with that net money back in this country, we could actually fund uh, things like the NHS, like our science base, uh, like our academic health science centres, even uh, more generously than we do at, at present. So that argument simply doesn't stack up. As for scientific cooperation across frontiers, we, of course we could continue to do that. The Erasmus programme could continue. All the things that we uh, do at an or used to do at an intergovernmental level, so all the cooperation on defence, on foreign policy, on security, on sharing of intelligence, all that c can be done and probably should be done intergovernmentally without putting it under the, uh, the auspices of the federal supranational institutions of the European Court of Justice and the Commission. Mr Johnson, can I, can I ask you about the state, the moment, can I ask you about the state of your... to bolt everything together with a supranational system that I think is, is, is going in the wrong direction. In terms of the state of the party the at the moment... Vote, but you, cannot vote for the, you cannot vote for the status quo in I, this referendum. I understand where you come from, but I want to talk to you about the state I of the Tory party, party this it's morning very, very as well. There's, it was always said that there well, wasn't going to be insults, there weren't going to be mud being slung all over the place. That is now happening. How can your party be held together after this vote? And to talk about you personally, if the UK votes to stay in Europe, does that then block any potential that you have to get to number 10, do you think? No, I, I look, I think, I really think that people love, and obviously I understand why it sort of makes it more fascinating to reduce all this to personalities, but this is about a fundamental issues of our constitution and whether we're able to govern ourselves and to take back control of huge amounts of money and our borders and, the, and, and, and our democracy. And just to get to the point I was, I was trying to make, you can't vote to stay, for things to stay as they are. 
because what will happen as soon as the British referendum is over, and if we do make the mistake of voting to stay in, they will use the institutions of the single market, the federal supranational institutions, to drive forward with a whole new agenda designed to prop up the euro using uh, measures to pull fiscal policy, uh, property rights, company law, uh, heaven knows what the whole agenda is set out in the five presidents report. The UK will inevitably be dragged into that and that's on top of the 600 million pounds a, a week that EU regulation is costing UK business. Okay, you, you've, you've said it's about the, right the issues. Would you welcome the opportunity to debate the issues in a TV debate? I, I've, I've said very clearly to uh, the, the people running up this side of the, the Leave campaign that I'm, you know, they point me and I'll march. I'll do whatever it takes to, to get these points so that's across. A yes, then, we've got it? lots of, of good, we've got lots of good debaters uh, on our side. Uh, Gisela Stewart, Michael Gove, Nigel Lawson, John Longworth. We've got, we've got huge numbers of people who are, David only got huge numbers of people who are uh, very, very, Ian Duncan Smith, everybody's there ready to to make the points, Chris Grayling, we're, you know, we, we're, there's, we're all there set to uh, get our argument over. And, and Kate Hoey, uh, we're all there. Can I ask you one final one before we let you go? Has the bus turned up yet, yes. by the way? The bus, I've seen the bus, it is, it is colossal. It's, I, I know it is, I, I, I'm, 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 of course, it's in, unlike, unlike the remain side of the argument, none of us, are, we are not spending nine million pounds of taxpayers' money on this operation. I think it's absolutely infamous, by the way, that, you know, they, they've got the whole government, the whole of Whitehall is supporting the remain campaign. They've got all their advisers who are being marched in the same direction. Every international visitor is, is made to spout the remain campaign lines, and they're spending nine million pounds of taxpayers' money on shoving a leaflet through everybody's uh, door. I think it's, I, I think it's absolutely Absolutely infamous, and uh, never mind. We, we few, we happy few, uh, with the s small amounts of money that we have our, at our disposal, will get our points across. And I think we've got a once in a lifetime chance to change the direction of this country and of democracy in Europe. Mr. Johnson, very quickly before we let you go, we're talking today about uh, microphone faux pas. No politicians make mistakes. Should David Cameron apologise for what he said about Nigeria and Afghanistan, do you think? I just saw that on the news. I, I think it, you know, the Prime Minister, as far as I understand it, was speaking very uh, candidly about the problems of, of global corruption. And I think most people will find it refreshing that he's, uh, he's speaking his mind. And, and the, the, the more people speak their mind, the better, in my view. Mr Johnson, thank you for talking to us this morning. Enjoy the bus. Thank you. Thank you.